Hello class, welcome back to Historical Geology. And I want to look today at the Fossil Lab 1, the sponges, the uh, protozoans, and other protist corals and bryozoans. And the way I've worked out the labs, obviously I, I've given you the two formats, whether you want to download the Word format or the PDF format. And I've already downloaded the PDF format. You'll see that in this lab setup, you want to read through the text and you'll find that many of the answers to the questions that come up later on, you'll find right here or in my video lectures. So you want to make sure you read through this. So as we go through the different activities down here, uh, for the stromatolites, these are bacteria, cyanobacteria. They, they're doing photosynthesis and they're making these algal mats. So it's really a, an algae, marine algae. And these are actually, I think these are the ones in Sharks Bay. These are, they're still around today. A few places where they are. Sharks Bay in Cameroon is another one, Cameroon in Africa. And these are some fossil stromatolites that are in, also in southern Africa as well. But the key thing is that these guys were important for helping to oxygenate the atmosphere. So if you read the, the instructions. There are only three questions. One organism I didn't talk about here, and I'll, I'll probably introduce in the samples, which is also part of the, uh, you know, at least scientists believe they're algae or some sort of cyanobacteria that's making small little algal mats or, or they're, they're kind of like walnut size. Um, and I'll show you some pictures in the in the lab. They're also dating to the Precambrian as well. And they're, so they're called oncolites. For activity 1.2, Again, you're reading through um, the different types of, really we're looking at plankton here, diatoms, colithophores. Remember the aquatarchs are those Precambrian, Archean, Proterozoic. They're really just the test or the, the little shells of what appear to be some sort of algae, some sort of photosynthetic algae maybe. Scientists think they're possibly some sort of phytoplankton that occurred in the Archean waters. And remember the protozoans, these are consumers. Remember the phytoplankton are producers. But the protozoans are consumers. They're not really classified as animals. They're not in the kingdom animalia. So we call these protozoans. They're not quite animals. Read about uh, the different types of protozoans there. An amoeba is a good example of a protozoan. When we look at diatoms here, you'll see that in the lab, there are some questions where I, have to, where I ask you to look at a microscope, or obviously you don't have one, but I've, I've taken pictures with my microscope, right? I have a, a like a a binocular microscope that has a little camera on it. And so you can see I have some diatoms here. So for that question in activity 1.2, question two is a picture. And so here you have to identify some of these. Remember, you, you, you're you using the, the lab to help you identify. So if we look at the, the different diatoms, I think I see that one in there and that one in there. So there's a few of these that I see in that picture for the lab. And so you got to kind of look around here and, and try to identify as many of these as you can, but these are all diatoms in here. So you'll be, so to fill out this, you want to sketch from the pictures that I've included in the, on canvas here. And you can see for question four on radiolarians, it's the same idea. You know, as we go down here, the next part here will be on foraminifera and radiolarians. And so again, there's, you'll you be using uh, this figure uh, six to help you identify the different types of foraminifera. So some of the questions on foraminifera, will ask you to look at this well data. And we're using the fossil foraminifera to kind of help us correlate between these, right? We're using the principle that notes that the strata we see, the layer we see should be continuous. So that's what I'm asking for over here. And so again, you just make the measurements here and try to figure out what depth you'd expect to find the oil bearing sandstone below this fossil bed over here, right? So based on the knowledge we have over here. And then when we're looking at Figure nine here, uh, we have a foraminifera species suite here, and we see that in well 71 and 34, they only occur once, but they, we see that they repeat. So to a geologist, this is indicating that there must be some, some sort of faulting that's causing strata to repeat. And so we haven't talked about geologic structures, but uh, we talked a little bit about plate tectonics, so you probably looked at them there, especially in the chapter, the textbook. But note that there's three fundamental types of faults. There's a, well, actually, really, there's two. There's a, the dip slip, which are these two, and then the strike slip. And in the dip slip, you're either move, one block is either moving down relative to the other, or, the, or one block is moving up relative to the other. So take a look at these and try to determine which one will cause a strata to repeat here for well 62. And then as we're looking for question four in the foraminifera, that's where you go back to the Canvas webpage 
And here, I want you to identify, I think I say three, and label the aperture, suture, and chamber for these, right? So that's a picture or, or slide for the phosphoraminifera for question four there. For the questions you can just answer them right here. Yeah, so on figure 11, you want to find these four aminifera, and you'll find them over here on figure, figure six, right? You'll want to find the fossils here on figure six. And then you, you write the name of each species, right? So you write the names of each genera or species there. And then you, you, you with a heavy black line, you draw out the, the range. For example, if we look at, let's just do one, Kinquoculina. <laughs> so, so we're using figure six here. So let's see what the range of this one is. And uh, here it is. So it goes from Jurassic to recent, Jurassic to recent. So we'll do this for, so I'm not gonna write it in here, but that, let's say it's Kinquoculina. So we're gonna do Jurassic to recent. So let's put a, a line there and we'll make it bold. And we'll go Jurassic. To recent, so we just draw a line from giraffe, a heavy bold line straight up to recent, and that would be it for that one. You just put the name of the fossil there. So that's what I want you to do for for each genera. Uh, write the name, the formula for here, and then draw out its range there. And then using that, you can answer the rest of the questions here. All right. So that's for the formula for for radiolaria. It's the same idea. You read the text. Here are some examples of formula You'll see that the name is a key to each of these. For example, number. 11 is astru, Astratura, uh, so that would be this guy here. Looks like a star, right? We have Formidifera right here in the San Francisco Bay Area, so all these little black dots are little the opaline test of the radiolarians. One thing about the radiolarians is that they're, they're really restricted to equatorial waters. So in the equatorial Pacific, there is this equatorial upwelling uh, where nutrient-rich rich waters are coming to the surface. So there's lots of phytoplankton productivity and these guys are around there because they're feeding on the phytoplankton, right? They're consuming other organisms. You can see the, the chert here in the Marin Headlands uh, across the Golden Gate Bridge here. And they occur in this ribbon chert. So when you see deposits of ribbon chert, you know, in the, you, you know that you're in the pelagic or deep water regions. So you can answer these questions about the cherts in the Franciscan Formation here in California. And then here I want you to, do, to sketch two different foraminifera and identify each. So obviously that's going to go back here to canvas. And here's a picture of the foraminifera for that question three. Sorry, on radiolaria for question three. Now we're looking at the kingdom porifera, which are the, the poor bearing animals, the sponges. And so you can read about the sponges here. There is a key for different types of fossil fungus, sponges. We'll be looking at this later on where, when you're identifying some of the fossils in the next video. So I keep reading here, let's see. The next, so there are no pictures to look at or anything, so you can answer all the questions here for the fossil sponges. For activity 1.4, we're looking at the, the nidaria, which are soft-bodied, usually you have radial symmetry stinging cells, right? So those are the jellyfish, the sea anemones, the coral. And coral are really important because they leave a, they fossilize because they, they make that hard calcium carbonate structure that they live in. So you can kind of read about some of the, the features of the coral here and their, their age ranges, distribution. So you'll see that there's really, there's three types of classes of corals we, we look at. There's called the, the tablet corals, the rugos corals, and the scalacterinians. And it's really based on the, the symmetry uh, and the, the prevalence of either the tabula, which are these horizontal lines, uh, as a coral grows, it's going to secrete like a, a base to its house, and then it's going to grow from there. As it gets bigger, it's going to make another base, and it'll be living in that, in that up, upper part of that fecal, which is a little cup where it lives in. And then the other one is a septum. The septum are these vertical partitions. Those are the ones that are either going to be separated into six chambers or four chambers over here for the rugos corals. So you can read about how I describe these. One thing about the, the tabulate corals or this order tabulata, they're, they're going to have a very prominent tabula. You'll see them in the fossil, and I think I have some pictures of those for you to understand. Whereas the rugose corals are going to have more of this prominent septa. And then so are the scalacterinians. But the difference between the rugos and the scalacterinians is that scalacterinians usually have a six-fold radial symmetry, whereas the rugose corals, because 
they only separate four of the six chambers that where they start adding more septa within those four chambers. So they kind of have a, they still have that six fold radial symmetry, but they have, they almost have almost like a bilateral symmetry based on how they're, they're dividing up just those four chambers. Whereas the scalacterinians are more clearly more radial. And I think I have some pictures to demonstrate that here coming up. And so as we go through here, you'll see that question four is gonna ask you to draw a tabulate coral and label the tabula, rugose coral and the scalacteridian. So that would be back on canvas. And so you can see I have, a, so you wanna sketch the tabula. So clear, obvious tabula. You can't see it as well on this one, but that's another tabulate coral. This is a favocyte. Actually, both of these are favocytes. And then uh, here is that rugose coral. And you can see the septa would be these, th this radiation here. And then here, I, I, I took this, these pictures in, with my microscope. You can see I have the six-fold radial symmetry of the scalacterinian. So you want to draw something along those lines there. So that would be for question four there. And then here are some of the, yeah, so here's a good example of favocytes. That's what I was just showing you, the, the clear tabula there. Uh, and also the halocytes have those as well. But you'll, you'll see the difference between halocytes and favocytes. They're both tabulate corals, but uh, often the halocytes are called like chain link because they're like occur in these, in these chains, whereas these are more of a honeycomb type coral here. All right, then the last part here oh, is on bryozoans, and bryozoans have the phylum ectoprocta. Often they're called phylum bryozoa, but we're looking at these. The key thing about bryozoans is that they have a one-way gut. In other words, they're, they're feeding with a mouth, but they have an anus, right? And so take a look at how we differentiate that from the nadarians, which have a two-way gut. And for the questions here, I guess we're looking at, for question one, we're looking at figure 27, which is this one here. We're gonna identify, and I've put those, those three. Yeah, so there's three bryozoans here. Your job is to identify them and label some of the, the features on these bryozoans. And then the last part will be to actually identify some fossils. So I'll make another video presenting, I think I have 10 or 12 fossils I want you to identify. You'll see that you'll be doing that here. So I'll go through that in a little bit here.